I would like to talk about a case that concerns my country. I'm from Italy, and Italy, as you know, now it's a modern democracy, but in the past it was a colonial country, and also during 20 years it was a dictatorship, the fascists. So during this time, starting at the end of the 19th century, Italy conquered a lot of countries in Africa, like other European countries, like uh, France or Germany or England and so on. And the countries that were conquered were Libya, essentially Libya, uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and some islands in Greece, Greek islands, some the, the, the Canes islands. This, um, uh, this co colonial conquest was done uh, with armies, with the... Uh, you know, modern, modern armies, which were much more equipped than the armies of the African people. So, and especially in the 1920s and 30s, uh, during the fascist uh, regime, you know, there was very, very uh, heavy fighting to conquer these uh, these countries, Libya and Ethiopia, especially, where people were uh, not only uh, killed and so, on, but also gas was used for to 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 kill armies and so on. So the conquest was very brutal and uh, probably also in violation of uh, international law for the use of gases and so on. Anyway, this was the situation. And World War II, World War II Italy lost its colonies. So after the war, uh, some people uh, started thinking that perhaps we should have done a, a, you know, an act of memorial recognition of the uh, colonial experience and the fascist regime. And people wanted to, some people proposed to build memorial to the victims of the fascist uh, and uh, colonial conquest. But this never happened uh, because, of course, of political reasons. Uh, because some of the parties that were there were against uh, the construction of memorials for the victims of colonialism, especially the right-wing parties. So the, the equilibrium that was found was like doing nothing, a, an act of denial. Um, I had this experience uh, during my tenure at, at UNESCO because we were able to collaborate with the Italian governments to give back to the Ethiopians a very important monument that had been taken by the, during the fascist regime. It's called the Axum obelisk. This was an obelisk that existed in the city of Aksum in Ethiopia uh, and that the fascist uh, regime took from, it, from Aksum and brought to Rome as a symbol, a trophy of the colonial conquest. This was built in front of a building which was at that time the Ministry of Colonies and today is the headquarters of FAO in Rome, okay, the Food and Agricultural Administration. The, in, in the year 2003 it was decided to bring it back to give it back to the Ethiopians. So the obelisk was dismantled from Rome and flown back to, uh, to Ethiopia and then reinstalled in Ethiopia. So now this was a very interesting gesture, an act of reconciliation and repatriation of the monument, one of the rare uh, situations. But where the monument was in Rome, there was a proposal to build there a monument to the victims of the fascist uh, colonial uh, enterprise. And, uh, and so people said, this is the right place. You know, we, take to, we gave back the obelisk to the Ethiopians. We have a place where to build the monument to, to give memory to the victims of colonial uh, enterprise. It was not possible. It didn't happen because, again, of political reasons and because of political opposition. And now, so they essentially asphalted the place and nobody you know, remembers anything. So there is a, you know, as you see, a denial of the historical responsibilities, which I think is negative because we should do, like many other countries have done, you know, an act of recognition of the past uh, uh, faults and, and, and violence uh, that uh, the country imposed to other countries.